Renault has been a market leader in delivering plug-in hybrid technology in smaller cars, models like this one, the Capture E-Tech Plug-in Hybrid 160. This compact crossover offers a 31-mile electric driving range and super-low better-fitting-kind taxation exposure, both things common in this class and highly valued by potential customers. Here, though, it's all presented with a combination of family-friendly flexibility, the sliding rear bench, for example, and a bit of Gallic pizzazz, courtesy of the available opportunities for bodywork and cabin customization, which all creates a car that's worth a second look. This plug-in capture always pulls away on full battery power. What then happens once you get going depends on how much charge there is in the battery and which of the various driving modes you've selected. Uh, there are three, pure, which engages all electric drive, joined by sport, which is engine only, and my sense, which is a hybrid setting that's engineered to use both power sources most efficiently. If, when in town, for example, you want to lock the car into battery-only drive, then you'll activate this EV button on the fascia. Otherwise, the hybrid MySense drive mode will be your most flexible everyday setting choice, and that's one that'll see the engine occasionally cutting in and out to help the battery out until the electric driving range, WLTP rated at 31 miles, is used up and full-time combustion power becomes necessary. The combustion unit in question is 1.6 litres in size and it's paired with a 49 kilowatt electric motor and a smaller integrated starter generator and together they draw their energy from a 9.8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery housed beneath the rear passenger seat and generate a combined output of 160 horsepower. The gearbox is an auto of course, but of the more unusual dog box clutchless variety and it offers an extra B mode which maximises regenerative braking to the point where you hardly ever actually have to use the brake pedal. Uh, whatever your chosen transmission setting, nearly all the time when you're either off throttle or slowing the car down, restorative energy is being fed back into the battery. Much of it is then used to aid acceleration, but if you want all of it to be saved for battery-only town travel when you'll most need it, then an e-save setting is available to allow for that. Inevitably, all of this clever tech carries quite a weight penalty, nearly 400 kilos, which has an effect on both ride quality and cornering body control. But unless you go throwing this car around, you'll probably be quite happy at the dynamic balance that Renault's achieved here, particularly when you look at the WLTP rated efficiency stats, 188.3 mpg on the combined cycle and a 34 grams per kilometer CO2 reading, which is low enough to enable a benefit in kind taxation rating of just 10%. Charging from 0 to 100% takes approximately 3 hours using the wall box that Renault's prepared to supply free with the car. PHEV models are usually difficult to differentiate from their more conventional counterparts and this Capture E-Tech plug-in hybrid is no exception to that. Uh, the differences in chassis structure are slight too. Uh, the second generation Capture model lines CMFB common module family B segment platform. Uh, that was designed from the outset to support hybrid and plug-in electrification, although curiously not a full EV model. Renault currently covers off the battery-only part of the small hatch market with its little Zoe hatch, but that car can't offer the street-side presence or the personalization options on offer here. In profile, you get a feeling for that. The roof, for example, can be specified in contrasting colors, gray, white, orange, or as in this case, diamond black. The side sills can be finished in orange or grey and trendy big wheels can also feature up to 18 inches in size although this typical S edition variant settles for these 17 inch Bahamas diamond cut rims. Right, so there's no fanfare for the plug-in powertrain outside. Will the use of this Capture's sophisticated drive tech be more evident at the wheel though? Well, no, not really. There's an EV button amongst the piano-style keys below this central 9.3-inch portrait-style EasyLink infotainment screen, which has various EV-specific menus, including a useful energy infographic, which shows at any given time what's being powered by what. The 10-inch instrument binnacle display is EV-specific too. Most of the e-tech features showcased in the right-hand virtual dial. As well as a lower charge meter, this features an outer rim showing blue regenerative 
green charge and white power zones. And it's got a central area that shows a triangulation of battery, e-motor and engine to depict in real time the hyperactive hybrid system's flow of energy. Glance down at the e-shifter auto gear stick and you might notice its extra regenerative braking B option. This lever sits on top of the unusual floating style centre console that's fitted to all automatic capture models with a cool blue light shining beneath this protrusion onto the wireless phone charger beneath. Otherwise things are just as they would be in any other well specified capture and they're further brightened in this case by the optional signature orange interior colour pack which adds a bit of colour to the cabin. Let's take a seat in the rear. It actually feels very decently spacious back here by class standards and that's helped by the fact that this second generation captures CMFB platform has allowed for a 17mm rear legroom increase. Despite the fact that the PHEV system's battery has been placed under this rear bench, it still keeps the sliding function that you'll find in a more conventional capture variant and it moves back and forth over a range of 160 mils. A rival Kia Nero plug-in can't be had with a sliding rear seat, while with a rival Mini Countryman PHEV, this feature costs extra. So the PHEV drivetrain doesn't affect the rear seat experience, but it does quite significantly impact boot space. As to be fair, is the case with virtually every plug-in hybrid we test. Uh, here, the battery placement sees luggage capacity with this rear seat right back fall from 422 to just 265 litres. That's pretty much super mini sized. Now one day we'll come across a small SUV fitted with a properly flexible 40-20-40 split backrest but that day hasn't come yet so this capture gets the usual 60-40 split affair which when it's pushed forward frees up 1118 litres of capacity down from 1275 normally across an almost flat load floor of 1.57 metres. If you do need more luggage space in a PHEV hatch of this size, then your dealer will walk you over to the other side of the showroom and will suggest that you take a look instead at the brand's Megane Tourer E-Tech Estate model. As you'd expect from a brand that's been selling electrified vehicles for over a decade, Renault is well advanced with this technology. And that shows with cars like this Capture E-Tech Plug-in Hybrid 160. It's one of 12 different hybrid engine models that the brand's developed, and it's the most popular PHEV car that the company makes. There are certainly lots of reasons why you might want one of these, including all the usual plug-in hybrid attributes, of course, uh, basically many of the good bits of an EV without the range anxiety downside. Plus, this Renault is more appealing in many ways than its two most direct rivals, the PHEV versions of the Kia Nero and the Mini Countryman. Uh, it's more customizable and it's smoother in terms of transmission and ride quality. We would still struggle to recommend it though over its E-Tech Hybrid 140 self-charging non-plug-in showroom stablemate. Compared to that car, there's a much smaller boot and a significantly higher price. And unless this PHEV model's benefit in kind, tax savings are really significant for you, you'd need a very dedicated charging regime to make the running costs of this plug-in version massively better than those of the self-charging variant. Still, a very dedicated charging regime is the sort of thing that a lot of potential customers here will have in mind. And with that in place, there would be a lot to like here. Now, yes, the money being asked for this car would get you a compact SUV with a posher badge, but you wouldn't be able to cruise silently past fuel stations in it, not unless you paid vastly more anyway. PHEVs of all kinds used to require you to pay vastly more, but thankfully things are changing and this car's a sign of that, which is why we're happy to welcome it. You might be too.